fucking moron! Hey! Moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the woo water boy, dude! Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as you ladies you know that this literally does not work and uh, i hope everybody's gonna have a great weekend we are getting closer and closer to the nfl season i don't know about you but i'm as excited as can be and you know oh lordy you know, everybody accuses me of just being a Dak Prescott fan, that this is the Dak Prescott channel. They wonder if I'm working for his agent and everything else. And I'm going to give you the real reason why I am a fan of Dak Prescott's here. Because the thing is, and here's a perfect example right here that we have this morning. Finding NFL quarterbacks is hard. It is the hardest thing to do in football. And the thing about it is, when you find one, it's a rarity. It's a rarity. Just think about this for a second. The Chicago Bears, as many quarterbacks as they brought through, do you know the Chicago Bears have never had a quarterback that's thrown for 4,000 yards ever in their history? That's a fact. And when you think about what some people go through trying to get a quarterback the thing about it is having the quarterback isn't the be all end all because i'm going to ask you a real question here does pat mahomes win the super bowl this year without having that defense without having pacheco running that football now to be fair, are the Kansas City Chiefs winning that Super Bowl without Pat Mahomes as well? No, they're not. Not at all. No chance. It's all of the above. You got to have the quarterback, but you also have to have the players to go around with them. Pacheco picking up yards when he needed it. Keeping him balanced. The defense shutting down San Francisco and holding him down on the gold line you need all of it as great as pat mahomes is without some of those other things he's not winning it so you must first have a quarterback to say you know what this guy's pretty good but i'm gonna just move on i'm gonna go get something else because i can just find another quarterback it doesn't work that way and here is one of the saddest situations for a quarterback and how far they have gone. Jamarcus Russell, who was the first pick in the NFL draft by the Raiders, has fallen so far, it's not even funny. Actually, let me blow this up a little bit because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. I got to read this. This is sad. Former... Number one NFL draft pick Jamarcus Russell was fired as a volunteer assistant coach at his alma mater, Williamson High School in Mobile, Alabama. Is facing a lawsuit accusing him of taking $74,000 check meant as a donation for the school. Jamarcus Russell was, a re was relieved of his volunteer coaching duties at Williamson High School during the fall of last year, Mobile County uh, Public Schools official told uh, WKRG Sports. A local business owner, Chris Knowles, wrote uh, a check for 74000 saying Russell approached him about a donation to help the high school team purchase more weight room equipment. The school allegedly never received the check, and Russell reportedly deposited it into a credit unit and promptly withdrew 55000 of it. In addition to being fired, Russell is not, only al not allowed on the school campus, according to the statement from Mobile County. Russell attended the event for the football team this week, but was told he was not welcome. As we go through here and we just say, let him walk, let him walk, let him go. 
I just want to, just for the 2000s, we'll just do this. Let's just play a little game here with the Raiders. Because we're hearing, of course, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, if Dak Prescott's a free agent, the, the Raiders, you know, just, just tell me a number would sign him in a heartbeat, which they have gone through and done. But just listen to this. Because if it was easy, you would think that teams like the Raiders or Cleveland or the Jets would be able, or, or the Bears would be able to find one. In 2000, Rich Gannon, who was started for four years, he was actually more stability. And this is after they had guys like Jeff George and Wade Wilson and Donald Hollis. He actually was stability for four years. They had Rick Meyer, another former first-round draft pick. Him and Drew Bledsoe were in the same draft. Marquez Tesupo, okay, with Rich Gannon. Kerry Collins, they went back to Rich Gallon, back to Kerry Collins, Marcus Tatupo, Andrew Walter, Aaron Brooks, Josh McCown, Dante Culpepper. They then drafted Jamarcus Russell, which only lasted for three years. Andrew Walter, Bruce Gronkowski, Charlie Fry, Jason Campbell, Another first-round draft pick of the Washington Commanders. Um, Bruce Kotbrokowski again. Carson Palmer. Jason Campbell. Kyle Bowler. That's 15 names. And I'm only into 2011. Terrell Pryor. Matt Magone. Matt Flynn. Then they had stability for a while. They had Derek Carr. Derek Carr was there for quite a bit. E.J. Emanuel, Jarrett Stenham, Adrian O'Connell, Jimmy G., and Brian Hoyer. Guys, that's 24 different quarterbacks in the 2000s. That's how hard it is to find a quarterback. They have literally gone through and they have drafted. And, and we could go even back further because they had uh, the guy who was uh, basically bred to be a quarterback. I can't even remember his name. Um, another one of the biggest flops they ever had. Uh, what was his name? That, that He literally never had McDonald's until he was like 18 years old. Um, God, what was his name? What was his name? I, I can't remember. But they've had so many flops at quarterback, it's not even crazy. And you could look at the Jets and say the last good quarterback they really had, I mean, you know, they had Ken O'Brien, which was pretty good. You know, and you got to go back to Joe Namath and things. It's hard. It's hard to find a quarterback. That's what I'm trying to tell you people. You just think, oh, it's okay. We can just bring anybody in here. Let's bring in Derek Carr, who never really did much with the Raiders and certainly is on his way out in New Orleans. Y'all are so ready to believe that this fantasy, that there's a quarterback out there you can just grab. We can go through here and look. Yeah, yeah, there is the Pat Mahomes. But how many people since Pat Mahomes – that are first-round drafted guys that have been bums. How many of these quarterbacks that are out here as free agents that you plug in, that you look and say, that guy turned around, he came through and won a Super Bowl after being a journeyman quarterback? It does not happen unless you're Peyton Manning. And the year that they won it in Denver, it wasn't because of Peyton Manning. It was because of that defense. He only had 13 TD passes, which goes to show you that you have to have a quarterback – but you also have to have a team around them. And that's my hypothesis. Now, Jerry Jones, <laughs> congratulations. You have exactly what you wanted. You have wanted a team that everybody's talking about. You wanted drama. You like stirring shit up. <laughs> you know I like to stir shit up. Well, the shit is definitely stirred. You got your, 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 your coach who's a little bit sick of this shit. You got now your, your number one defensive player who threw people under the bus, now getting thrown underneath the bus. You got players unhappy and holding out 
because they're not getting their contract and wanting to get paid. You are literally looked at as an ept, crazy, and don't care about winning. Congratulations. You brought this all on yourself. You created the media monster that is, that has your number one defensive player being the president of Bleacher Report and having podcasts and having his teammates saying, maybe you should be focusing in on, on the field. And on top of that, well, the crazy thing is, is you get a couple of guys that are stars that everybody automatically thinks that that guy is going to be the guy that's going to win the Super Bowl by themselves. It's not good enough that Micah Parsons could get 12 plus stacks on a regular basis, but now we got to have him cover. We got to have him be a run stopper and a podcaster and a team leader, as opposed to saying, you're going to be my pass rusher and I'm going to get some guys in the middle to make the tackles, uh, you know, to, to go ahead and hold up the line. And I'm going to actually have some linebackers on the team when the playoffs come that aren't injured. You are the one that this all points to. I said yesterday in a video, you can blame Dak Prescott and say he's not good enough. Well, I got to tell you, it doesn't matter who you have at quarterback with the Dallas Cowboys as currently constructed with the way the system is that's going to win. You got a lot of pieces that are really, really close. But because we like the drama, because we like the uncertainty, because we like to see the leaves, we won't see more leaves fall off the tree. Every single time you've done this bullshit with contracts, you have hurt the team. Zeke Elliott holding out, hanging out in Cabo, running in the sand. Don't know if he was drinking Coronas with lime in him or not, but that season was a waste. It was. You literally denigrated the man and said, Zeke who? Zeke who? <laughs> we, we got Tony Pollard. Zeke who? Okay. Demarcus Lawrence. Instead of paying Demarcus Lawrence and getting it done early, you messed around and the player kind of said, you know what? I'm not going to get my shoulder operated on until I get a contract. And that was what? May? And was unable to lift weights or use his arm all off season, which ended up being a wasted season for him because as a defensive end, as a run stopper, you need an arm, buddy. You need an arm. That's on you guys. You wasted time and hurt the team. And here we have C.D. Lamb. We want to have him hold out too? Best weapon we have on it on the team? Have him miss half a training camp when training camp is only 14 padded practices and stunt the growth? This is on you, Jerry, or Steven. It's on you guys. You wait to the last minute. Hey, we don't have any healthy linebackers. Let's just use a safety. Position flex. Hey, we only have one experienced linebacker. Let's sign Anthony Barr a guy past his expiration date who just tore his ACL and bring him in a training camp. That'll work. Hey, we lost Overshone in training camp, and we have Van Der Esch, who's always one hit away from being retired. Let's bring in Shaq Leonard in the middle of the season and kick the tires on that. All of this, all of this. If you had linebackers that could make tackles, Michael Parsons is not saying he needs to play linebacker because he's selfish because he's only playing one position. I, I want guys that play one position and play it well. I'm not looking for position flex. I'm not looking for a safety who's too small to try and be a linebacker. I'm not looking for defensive tackles to try and be a one technique guy. You want to do the job, you need a specialist to get the best results. You know, it's kind of cool. My brother showed me, because I've got a few tools that, that you very rarely need them, but when you need them, oh my God, they're just a the thing. 
So I still had a little problem with my AC unit. So there's a thing called a Schrader valve. I don't know exactly how it works or stuff for the air conditioning, but the Schrader valve, you know, has to be changed. And when you take anything off an air conditioning, you know, you, you have to pump it out or you blow the charge and blow the atmosphere. But they have a special tool that goes over top of it. And somehow this tool goes into it and locks it all off. And it's able to remove it, pull it out, locks the vacuum of it, take that one in, and then it goes back into it. And you don't have to let out all the propane gas. Because, you know, a keg of gas is like $300 plus dollars now. And now they're going to be changed into propane. Okay? Hank Hill's going to be happy. But yes, the new AC units will be full of propane to cool your house. I don't know who comes up with this shit, but it is. But you need the right tool to do the job. Get me a one technique guy who's there to crack some skulls like John Ridgway. And that's all he's going to do. You got one job. Hold the line in the middle. Keep the linebackers clean. Put a little pressure in the middle so Micah Parsons could feast. Instead... We get, <laughs> I like to stir shit up. So we've got Mike McCarthy, uncertain future, of course, even though he has the highest winning percentage, I believe, of any coach of the Dallas Cowboys. you got to say he's the number three coach of all time for the Dallas Cowboys at this moment. Changed my mind. But that guy, that guy who has been undermined, cut off on the knees, who is flustered, He's the problem. Oh, uh, this also uh, gained some interest with our fan base when we talked about it on the show earlier this week was the uh, the Ty Dunn report that that uh, Mike McCarthy has been uh, a little fed up with the whole concept of all in. And my response to that was, if it's true, can you blame him? What what light can you shed on? We're all fed conversation up. As we head into the Cowboys training camp season. I would say this, Rich. Mike McCarthy has worked for Jerry Jones for the past four years. Every day that you work for Jerry Jones, who is a brilliant businessman, you know Jerry might decide to go on the radio or talk to the media after a game or say something that generates some type of buzz and creates things that then you're answering for the following week. Jerry saying all in, I believe that happened uh, at the Senior Bowl, is just one little fleck of paint in the tapestry of everything that has that Jerry Jones has surrounding that organization all the time, which certainly from a business perspective has helped Jerry Jones be a very, very, very rich man. At times from a football perspective, maybe some of that stuff is disadvantageous. I don't believe that Mike McCarthy is thrown by any of that at this point because he knows Jerry. He knows the conversations that he has personally with Jerry Jones. Now, you know, when there's a lot of wisecracks on social media about every time they sign another UFL player of all in Cowboys are all in like, all in. It, it becomes more, I think of a media thing um, than anything else here. No, I, I don't believe that Mike McCarthy is, is in any way uh, affected by something Jerry Jones says, but it's just because Jerry does so much. If anything, knowing Mike and I've known Mike since 2007, when I got on the beat at the Green Bay Press Gazette, going into a contract year mm -hmm. as a guy who's led three consecutive 12 win teams, disappointing endings, no doubt about it over these past couple of years here. But Mike just wants to go out, kick everybody's ass, get a new contract and go try to win Super Bowl. That that's his focus. <laughs> that's what he wants to do. Now, I'm sure it's his focus, but I mean, uh, you can't blame him for a human moment to potentially share with somebody who then shared it with Ty Dunn that he's fed up you know like this is ridiculous like i i want cd lamb in here we know we're gonna pay him so pay mm -hmm. him you know i want dak prescott to not have uh, all these questions asked of him so pay him you know micah parsons the whole business uh, obviously has no control over it and you're right it is part and parcel of working for the joneses which you know, we both do, technically, also, <laughs> you know. Well, Jerry, so. Jerry's got a lot going on. I mean, last year he was traveling all over the world. He had cameras in every meeting because he was having a, a documentary made about his life. You know, there's times where you're before the start of free agency and every team's talking about stuff. Jerry might be on his yacht for a week, and you just wait till he gets back and you find out what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's everything's a little bit different 
in Dallas. And that's just kind of, you know, part of the show here. I mean, yeah, it, Mike would love for, I'm sure, Dak Prescott to get locked up and CD to get locked up and Micah to get his money. Um, and I do think still, not just Dak, but CD, potentially there could be a window mm-hmm. to get a deal done before the start of this season too. I mean, we're, we're sitting here in June. There's a long way to go still, a couple of months until no, the start of no. training camp. I think that you know, no. we've discussed many Not times a couple of months. over the past it's several months here, a lot of other franchises would have been proactive in these types of situations with their franchise yeah. players, with their head coach. I can't remember any other team going into training camp potentially with their quarterback and their head coach, both headed into contract years. But again, Thank Dallas you, is its own animal. Everybody knows that, you know, that's why, you know, it's kind of I chuckle every time that people keep bringing up the idea and we're at the end of last season of could Bill Belichick work for Jerry Jones. And I just have these visions no. of the Cowboys suffer a tough loss in week one and Bill's walking out of the locker room and Jerry's got every camera around him and is sounding off on what they called on third and eight on defense in the fourth quarter. I just I don't see that <laughs> match being able to happen, even though I know there's there's certainly mutual respect. I don't see that happening either, but um I think in the end, it'll end up being everything gets done and we have animosity throughout the team. It's just kind of crazy. All right, good people. Got some things we're going to be taking care of here today. Our winner last night, Big Gib 